Hey there guys and welcome back to San Francisco. Alright guys, so in this episode we build two really cool things and the first thing that we're looking at here is going to be where Chinatown's going to go. Or rather, this is pretty much where Chinatown sits in San Francisco. So as you can see from this shot, I need to fill this out before I can take the downtown any further up Market Street. And the real life Chinatown here is quite big, it's 10 or 12 blocks from what I counted and I've had to squeeze that down a little bit here, but we still get a really cool Chinatown buzz. So let's go. I haven't been fortunate enough to go to San Francisco myself, so I have to pretty much rely on Google Earth. And I probably spent a good maybe one or two hours just looking around Chinatown in San Francisco on Google Earth. And there was a lot to it, so I sort of decided I'm going to build the most large or prominent feature first and then sort of whittle my way down. And this big courtyard here sort of jumped out straight away. Now, I don't really want to follow this like for like, but I'm definitely going to put a bit of an Asian or a Chinese twist on it. And I've never built a Chinatown before, so it was quite interesting on the Steam Workshop, looking at all the different assets and corridors and really beautiful, intricate stuff, some of it. And after looking at all of that, I started to get really excited. So we see a little bit of that put down in this courtyard and it definitely was a lot of fun to build this area. And one of the most prominent features about this little area was this walkway over the road that goes into a building. And I've added some props, some prop concrete with PO on the building to make it look like the one from real life a little bit more. And then I use some prop stairs at the end to sort of level it down. And the terrain we're working on here is split level. So I've raised up a platform about eight feet in the air that we've come down to here. And then it'll just run into some buildings. So it works out quite well because of it being elevated towards where we're building. And I'm going to turn this path invisible eventually, but I'm using it the vanilla one so I can line up what I'm making here. And I use concrete to make a platform. And then we can switch across to the building side and it sort of flares out here where it meets the building to create a bit of an entry or an entrance way. So in game I try and make an entrance down on ground level and then this entrance that's elevated as well. And just use some pillars to hold up the levels, put in a few prop doors and a few things here and there to make it look a little bit more appropriate. There isn't actually any pedestrians going in this way. This is all just fake to make it look like we can enter this way. But what I've done with the real pedestrian path going across is I've linked it through the building and back out onto the footpath. So we get a lot of foot traffic through here later on. So it doesn't really matter whether this is an entrance or not because you can literally get citizens to walk wherever you want if you plumb your pedestrian paths up. And my suggestion there would be to use these vanilla paths in the raised option and then just make them invisible when you've got them where you want them and everything's built. That way if you need to make any minor adjustments you can see what you're doing and then you know change it to invisible after that. So I add a few more decals and a few more props here in the way of trees and stuff. And I still keep this pretty simple. I mean, this might be hardcore detailing to some people, but if anyone's seen my Europe series, you'll know this is very minimalist here. And once I've finished putting those few props down, we can add the surrounding buildings and really make this sort of blend in with the rest of the city. And I think it looks great. So you can see here where the pedestrian path comes out onto the roadway and I kind of need to do something with it so it doesn't look like people are just walking through a concrete wall. So I use a couple of prop doors and an awning and sort of make this look like it's a little alleyway entrance. And then I flip around and do the same on the adjacent street. Just put a little prop door in and it looks like a back entrance. The only other props I'll put down in the area are little wee bushes little concrete slabs on the ground and I think I put a couple of trash assets around in the other alleyway. But again, I am very proud of myself for not using many props. It's obvious that I don't really need to to get the vibe we're going for. So after I do this, we can push on to detailing across the actual square a little bit more closely. And this is where you'll see me start to place down some of the Chinese themed assets that I mentioned earlier. There's a little pond here with a nice little red bridge that goes over it and a couple of those Asian themed corridors 
and I actually used the Park Life DLC here, the little gate, to make it into an actual park. So we changed this name to Chinatown eventually, and it's pretty cool. We get a pretty gnarly fireworks display that goes off here every now and then. And I also linked that park path back into our path that's running up and across the road. So this is a usable path. Pedestrians will be walking right through this area, which just really tops it off, I think. Over the far side of the park, I looked to put in a couple of little playgrounds and some steps down because the elevated road on that side is quite steep. And the reason I put these playgrounds in is because the real life one has a pretty cool playground here by the look. So that was sort of inspired by the real location. I found a handful of really good Chinatown sort of style buildings on the workshop but I wanted to make a few more of my own so I'm using a few of these American themed buildings and then just putting my own Chinese sort of sign writing and stuff on the front and I've decided to do five all up here and they've got mixed writing on the front and some of them on the sides of them and the idea is to scatter these through the blocks just to add a little bit more variety to Chinatown. These mixed in with the tenements and stuff that I've got look really cool. So looking on Google Earth here, these buildings are really packed in. There isn't a lot of spare room. So that's pretty much the main criteria here, apart from the style of building I'm using that I'm going for. I'm just going to cram a building into every little space that I can on these blocks and see what it looks like basically. And thankfully, it came out looking not too bad at all. I had these massive plans on doing this transport hub in the middle of downtown for trams and buses and all this things and I was drawing up different designs and I actually had no idea that this Salesforce Transit hub actually accommodates all of those things in one thing. I had no idea and by the sounds of it it's fairly new. Would I be right in saying that? I'm pretty sure it is but anyway after a bit of investigation I seen that there was metro and all of these things all in one and I thought wow I wonder if I could build this in the city so here we go. I'll give it a go. So first things first, I've got to clear out a few buildings and because the downhill's on a slight incline, I've got to level off some of this. I'd prefer that it was level what we started on. So that even that took a bit of work. I had to move a few of the buildings around and whatnot. And then I want to start by branching off the highway into a separate lane that runs into the hub. Admittedly, this isn't running exactly like the real life one. My one turns a corner and then comes across into the hub, whereas the real life one sort of comes into the side of it. But nonetheless, I think it's still pretty close and this road will be half in the building and half out of the building, which is pretty cool. And I'm actually not too sure where it runs to in real life, but my one's going to run into a couple of different car parks that service the transit hub, or if you're taking one of the public transport options, you can park your car here maybe. And I really love the way the highway sort of snakes around here and drops down into the car park. I think it looks really cool. And in terms of the car park, it's left very simple because you're not really going to see too much of it. And it is just a dirty old car park at the end of the day. So it's basically just concrete and parking spaces. 
but it's also a fundamental part of this build so I thought I'd better show you guys a bit of this it was tempting to do it off camera but no nah, we've got to see this part of it and this is only the first of two that I end up putting in the next one goes to the left of the camera from this view here in that block so I extend the highway on a little bit and that's where it enters into the rear of the hub and that'll sort of be executive parking spaces so next was to hollow out where we've cleared out the buildings and start to get a nice flat area where we can install the metro so obviously because we're bringing a metro in here and it's an underground metro in this instant we have to drop the level of the terrain here so that we can expose the station and i went and grabbed the metro overhaul mod and i've never used this before so it's a real head spinner for me i'm still getting used to it now but that's what i've used to sort of enable everything that i've needed to to build this so i end up using the terra networks to get a nice flat even bottom on the station and she looks pretty ugly at the moment but i've got to get these stations in place and these stations here were designed to go on flat ground admittedly so I've had to push them down a little bit which buggers them up a little wee bit but I'm planning on fixing all of this with props and whatnot. And once I get this first station into a pretty good position I copy it over to the other side because I want two different stops in here. Initially we're just going to use one but I want to use or be able to use the second one eventually. Then my focus was getting these lines out under the buildings and into an area where I can carry them on around the city and then detailing to suit, i.e. putting all the tunnels in, making sure the roads are elevated and in the right spots and stuff like that. Then I can come back and add in the retaining block right on the edge of the train track. You can see I couldn't put this in before the train track was in because this is going in to suit where that track sits. Then I can run this all the way across the side on both sides and it's starting to look a lot cleaner now and a bit more workable. This big hole you see in the ground right here is going to be our executive car park eventually. And the reason I'm building it with the Terra network holding the ground down is because we're going to have a simple underground walkway, rendered walkway that we're going to create with props and pedestrian paths that runs from here directly into the metro station. So they have a pretty easy walk from this car park straight to where they need to go. So I use Ronix's block, his concrete block prop as sort of like the retaining walls and then we add a pedestrian path in where I've left a little wee gap where I want it to run and of course we add in some stairs where we need to as well. Next thing to do is our little trick with the elevated vanilla pedestrian path. We jiggle that, get that in the right spot so it's running up and down our stairs and this path has been designed so it runs directly onto the middle platform between the trams or the metro so a very luxurious short walk from your car and then the next thing to do is use the surface networks to cover it all over and leave just a little wee gap where the pedestrians can enter and exit this tunnel that we've just made and i've connected it up to the side of the road too so we just get general foot traffic going through here and through the hub they might just be walking completely somewhere different but they go through here which is good i want as many people going through the hub as possible and once that surface was all done i can carry on with this road and it goes in exactly like the other car park it loops around till it's on the ground and then just plums back into the roadway then I just make sure that the concrete edges are all appropriate and not just like paper thin surface networks so I add props in where I need to and then after a little bit of props here and there and gardens and whatnot it looks something like this and again very simple but pretty appropriate I think.
Now I shift my focus to putting in some pedestrian paths and I want this one to run down to the metro and also out onto the road and also up to the bus and then from the bus up to the top level. So you can you can see that um, I want this to run everywhere. So I'm trying to set this down so it's as efficient as I possibly can make it. There's no fancy twirls or any unnecessary turns or detours. It's pretty much A to B, as logical as I can get it. But we're going to dress it up along the way, of course. But building like this can almost guarantee that no matter where you run your pedestrian paths, you're going to get lots of citizens use them. So not only are these paths connecting these stations, I've also run the paths so they go just through downtown, so there's general foot traffic through here as well. The first part I really focus on though is this elevator or these two elevators that I want to make running from the main platform down to the metro station. I wanted to make it look like it was sort of a suspended walkway that ran down and I think it looks pretty cool in the end. So the next bit that I move on to, I was really unsure about. I tried this a few times with varying success, but basically I'm trying to make elevated bus stops up on this level. And I also want to have a pedestrian path that brings people up here rather than them walking along the roadside. And that is very difficult. I learned a lot from City Walk City Walls Mars series on how to do this. But the bus line that I'm using here is actually a ground bus line and because we put the Terra networks in earlier, it's, you don't see any of the terrain underneath it. So I would have introduced those if they weren't there already, the Terra networks. But basically we have to make it a ground road so that we can connect that pedestrian path up to it. It's vital. Otherwise the citizens will just walk along the road to get up here and we don't want that. I want it to make it look like they're coming through the hub. So what we do is connect the pedestrian path to the ground and then I drag it up to the bus stop that I set up next to the road. And the people will use the path to get to the bus stop rather than walking up the road. So as you would imagine this took quite a long time to get right and I had to introduce a bus line around the rest of the city and some bus lines to see if it would work and fortunately after half an hour I came back and it was working. When the bus line enters into the hub I sort of want to make it look like it just runs into a flat white sort of room you know I don't want to make it look like there's an actual road in a room I don't think that makes too much sense so for now you'll see me keep this bus road in so I know where the bus is running but eventually I'll turn it into an invisible road and um, just blend it into sort of a white decal concrete base but the most difficult part about this was definitely getting these pedestrian paths right Getting it to work was number one, and number two would be making it look somewhat appropriate. And what I end up doing here, once I get it going, is condensing the path down to a really small, sharp incline that you wouldn't want to see if I didn't hide it, and then just try and hide it with a whole lot of different glass door props squeezed together. And this kind of looks like just a big sort of lift shaft or something of the like and I run that up and through the bus level just a little wee bit just enough to get a door in up there and then the pedestrian path gets plumbed in so the people look like they're going in and out of those doors. I use a really simple concrete prop here turned into procedural objects to make the base of where they're going to run the buses and I pretty much cover the whole road over and then I add these really big decals in that were from an opera pack I think it's the Dubai opera pack and aside from the lift shaft a small garden and the supporting pillars this is a very simple level it's just got another pedestrian path that's going to run up to the very top level running through here as well and that's pretty much it the very next level i work on is the very top level of the entire salesforce transit hub 
and in my opinion it's definitely the most interesting it's got massive green areas and this has got to be at least 50 or 60 feet off the ground which is just incredible and considering it's in the middle of the downtown area as well i mean that's that's really fantastic so i use some double-sided surface networks up here which is important so that when we look at this from underneath we can still see a solid surface and in terms of aesthetics it's got these sort of bumps on the side of it every now and then that sort of flare out a little bit and create a wiggly walking path that goes around the top so i'm trying to nail that as well and when it comes to the facade, it's got this really cool looking white facade around it that must be see-through because when you look through from the inside, there's a lot of natural light coming through. And I tried for hours to find the right asset to be able to make this and in the end I gave up because I couldn't find something and I thought, well I'll make it out of glass and these white pipes and hope that it sort of gives off the same vibe and I think it does. So what I want to do here is, with a fair amount of work with PO, admittedly, I'm making one section of it and then I'm just going to copy this over and over and sort of merge them together to suit. And once I'd sussed one section, I brought it over to it and yeah, copied it right around it and then I can carry on with the pedestrian path that follows the contours of it around on that very top level. For the main grass surface on the top, I've used a grass planter prop and then stretched it out really big with PO to fit and then sort of dragged this the whole way down till it looks sort of like rough grass and I had much nicer grass in future in a few spots but this is good enough for now. Once I've got all the grass in place, because it's a little bit thicker, I have to drag the path up and reconfigure it up above the grass height. Then we can come back to the parking side of the transit hub and start detailing it a little bit closer. So this transit hub in real life has a building on the end. I'm not sure what it's for but in this instance I'm making it sort of a parking building and maybe it's got like a lift in it as well. And here I'm adding like toll gates off the bottom as well. There's a new tree snapping mod out that replaces the random tree rotation the unlimited trees mod and of course the tree snapping but it does all of those three in one so I highly recommend that for sure. So in terms of what I build up here I try and keep this pretty close to the original at least for part of it and it looks like there's a bit of a round stage at this end of it with a field for people to sit around in. Maybe they have concerts up here or something like that and there's also a bit of a main building and it looks as though there's another stage off the far side of that but when it's all done it looks very green and walkable indeed and the far side of the Salesforce park has entry into the Salesforce building from this top level or at least from what I can gather from Google Earth and admittedly the access is probably more like in the middle but because my version's a little bit shorter and a little bit scaled down it sort of ended up on the end here but I'm still trying to stick true to that in real life Salesforce Park. And this end has some really funky black and white paving, heaps more trees, and it has a bit of a dome. It must be a light dome with some palms around it as well, so I add that in too. And the last thing I do, most of it's off camera, but I go around and just do the last little props. Things like signs and directories and timetables and schedules on screens. Things like bins and benches. And I top it off by getting some custom ride trains of the Steam Workshop, the North American type. I'm really pleased with how it's come out in the end. I really do enjoy doing these custom type builds and the fact that this is actually here in real life was just a massive bonus really I never intended on going this deep on it but the more I investigated the more magnificent it is and this has definitely been the most enjoyable thing I've ever built in City Skylines and I think that's because I'm really pleased with how it came out but I'm also pleased at the functionality this has really got a purpose it's full of people and I expect it to get even more busy and full of people and yeah it should just find its place really nicely in the city I also spent a fair amount of time off camera placing in some lights and I've got some really nice nighttime and dusk shots here showing it off 
and it just looks awesome it really lights up the interior nice and bright and it just i've never built anything like this and it most definitely adds a point of difference to the downtown here hit that thumbs up if you liked it guys stick around because episode 5 is coming and i hope to see you there take it easy guys see you later mm -hmm.